In our previous videos, we have built this user interface with several buttons and other widgets, and we've also built the activity that supports this user interface. In this video, we're going to discover how to quickly make an app work by borrowing components that are already assembled and ready for us to use. When we have an idea, we want to very quickly make it happen, and we want to do it as efficiently as possible with as little code as possible. So what we're going to do in this video is use this Take Photo button. And we're going to have it trigger the camera, and we are going to have it show a thumbnail and an image view that we'll add at the bottom of this layout. So first things first, let's open up Android Studio, and we're going to go to this layout. And a little tricky to see on the resolution I have here, so let me resize it just a bit. And I'm going to go uh, over to the left and I am going to look for something called an image view. And we see the image view under widgets and then image view. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. I'm going to try to expand this a bit. I'm going to drag the image view and I'm going to drop it right underneath the save button. And then I'm going to try to expand it to get it to take up the full width of the screen. And we'll see if we can get it to go all the way to the bottom as well. Okay, so now our image view is taking up the entire bottom of the screen. The idea is that we can GPS a plant and we can take a photo of that plant. And at some point we'll be able to actually upload that photo uh, up to the web. So we know the one secret about using the uh, drawing a user interface is as soon as we drop an item onto the user interface, we want to change the ID to something that we will remember. So I'm going to call this IMG plant photo, something like that, or specimen photo. We could call it that if we want, IMG specimen photo. Let's call it that and enter. Okay, we already have our button, the button called take photo. While I'm here, I'm going to make a change to this button as well. We're going to add an on click. I have a previous video where I showed how to use an on click. We'll do a quick rem uh, reminder of that here. I'm going to say BTN, take photo, clicked. I'm going to highlight that, control C, and enter. And now I am going to save, and I'm going to go back to my activity. And we know the secret with getting a button click is we want to use a method with a very specific signature. Public, and then void. And then the value we put in that on click earlier, just now, and then view V, and uh, open curly, close curly, and I'm going to say this method will be called when the take photo button is clicked. Okay, now here's where it gets nice. We don't want to write code to actually go toggle the camera because that code already exists. We just have to invoke it. And so what I'm going to do is make a new intent. And this is called an implicit intent because I'm just saying what I want to do, but not how I want to do it. So I'm going to say intent camera intent equals new intent. And then I'm going to say android.provider.mediastore.action image capture. Now that last part looks a little bit tricky. Uh, because I, I typed a whole bunch of things in there, but really this is just resolving to a string that says, hey, I want to take a picture. Now we notice that the intent is showing up red, and anytime something shows up red, we want to fix it right away. With, uh, with Android Studio, Alt-Enter is going to help us out. It's going to make a suggestion that will help us to resolve this red line. And in this case, I'm going to choose Import Class. And all of a sudden, the red line goes away. Now I'm going to say start activity for result, and I need to call camera intent. I need to pass that in, the uh, variable I made just above, and then I need to pass in a unique number. The value for this number isn't really relevant. It just has to be unique, and here's why. We're calling this camera. We're going to get a picture back. What if on the same screen we called a photo gallery, got a picture back? What if we called a music player? got uh, a music file back. Uh, we have to know when we, when we receive things in return where they came from. 
And so this unique identifier uh, tells us where it came from. I just picked the number 10. We just want to make sure it's something unique. Now, uh, that's kind of what we call a magic number because it doesn't really mean anything. We want to give it some meaning so our code will be self-documenting. So I right-click, I choose Refactor, and then Extract, and then Constant. I know that's a little bit off screen, but alternatively, Control-Alt-C will do the same thing. And for this, I'm going to say Camera Request. And you see what it's doing, if you take a look at the little pop-out bubble up here, is it's making an, a variable called Camera Request and setting it equal to 10. It's the same result as having the number 10 right here, but with that constant camera request, it's more self-documenting. Therefore, we don't need as many comments in our code because our code is more readable. And that will toggle the camera. Now, where do we receive the image in return? For that, we need to create a method called onActivityResult. And you see, as I start typing, uh, Android Studio is going to make a suggestion for me. It's going to say, you know what? I bet you want to override a method called protected void on activity result. And yes, that is what I want to do. So I choose enter and uh, Android Studio will fill in all of the details for me. Now, what we're going to receive here in this on activity result is a request code. What's the request code? It's a number we passed in here. Anytime we call an intent that's going to return value to us, it's going to invoke this method and it's going to pass that request code back in through this method. That's how we know which intent is returning to us. Result code. Did it go okay or did the user cancel? So usually when you have your uh, camera up, you have an opportunity to select a photo or an opportunity to cancel and back out. And that result code is going to tell us if everything went okay or if the user canceled. Finally, data, that's what's going to contain the image. So within here, I'm going to do an if test. We're going to say if request code equals uh, double equal in this case if request code equals camera request okay so we're just saying are these two things the same is the request code the camera request then I'm going to do open curly and close curly and I'm just going to say we are hearing back from the camera okay now before this if test I'm going to make a new another if test outside of it that says if and then open paren result code equal equal result underscore OK. So what we're saying here is did the user choose OK? I'm going to refactor a little bit and nest the one if test inside of the other and just put some comments up there since this is our first time. Did the user choose OK? If so, the code inside these curly braces will execute. Okay. Okay, so I think we're all good here. So now we have to decide what to do with the image that we receive in return. And we get that image in through this thing called data. I'm going to say data dot get extras and then dot get double quote data. Now that seems a bit confusing, but the magic here is when the camera takes a photo, it turns that into an image. And this is how we access that image. Don't get too caught up in the syntax here. Just know this is a magic way that we're able to access that image. I put my cursor on the get method, and I'm going to hold Control-Alt-V, which will take that and extract it to a variable. In other words, this method called get is going to return that bitmap. Control-Alt-V makes a variable where we can store that bitmap. So I'm going to call this just a camera image, but it's not an object, it's a bitmap. So I need to change the type from object to bitmap. And then we know our trick here, we're going to do an alt enter, and uh, that will fix that. And now I'm redlining. I'm redlining because we need to cast. Casting means we are storing a variable in the bitmap but the method is returning a different type. So we have to cast to build a bridge from what the method is returning to what the variable wants to hold. 
Once again, Alt Enter and choose Cast. Okay, just a few more steps to go. Uh, at this point, we have the image from the camera. All we need to do is we need to stuff it into that image view. So I'm going to go up to our onCreate method, and I'm going to get access to the image view. We do it just like we got access to this autocomplete text view in a previous video. We're going to invoke find view by ID. So I start typing find view, and you see that again it autocompletes for me. And I'm going to say r.id.img specimen photo. Remember when I said when we add a widget to the layout, we want to give it a descriptive name that we're going to remember later. So r.id.img specimen image photo and terminate with a semicolon. This time I'm going to do control alt F, which is going to create a field out of this image view. So find view by ID is a method that returns a value and control alt F is going to store that value into a field. We're going to call this one IMG specimen photo. That's fine. And enter. Okay, and it finishes up. It takes what we get from this find view by ID, stores it into this new field. A field is declared outside of a method, and the benefit with that is that we can then access that field, that variable, inside of any methods within this class. Okay, so that means I can access it down here in on activity result. So I'm going to say IMG specimen photo. And then I'm going to say dot set image bitmap. Uh oh. And I notice now that my method I want to call doesn't exist. And why is that? Well, you see, it's similar to that casting we were talking about earlier. This variable is a variable of type view, but that's a very general variable type. Any of the things that we see on this screen could be considered a view. But you see we have buttons, labels, texts, a chronometer up above, and our image view. A view is just the general things that you could say about any one of those components. We need to cast this to an image view. Take a look at the right. You see image view? We need to cast it to a more specific type called image view. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the variable type to image view and save. And as soon as I do that, you see it's going to redline again because it doesn't know what image view is. So alt enter and import class that will care of that. But now our find view by ID, just like the one above, we need to cast. See this cast up here? We need to do the same thing down here. The important about a part about a cast. What goes in the parentheses is the type you're casting to. In this case, I'm casting to autocomplete text view. Down here, I want to cast to an image view. If you ever forget, don't worry. Just click Alt-Enter and choose Cast and let Android Studio do the work for you. Now we've saved the value as an image view. So I go back down to where I left off. IMG specimen photo dot set image bitmap and you see now that very that method is available to us because we're dealing with a more specific variable type set image bitmap and we're going to say camera image okay and save and now i'm going to deploy and we'll see how this looks in the debugger now in the emulator We see, uh, we, we see our layout that we're familiar with. Now take a look. I'm going to choose Take Photo. And what comes up is a little camera emulator, kind of a checkerboard pattern. I'm going to move this up so we can see it. You see it's a red box now. I'm going to click on the shutter button. And then I have the checkbox. If I chose the X, that would effectively be a cancel. But the checkbox is an OK which gives us that result OK we saw in the if test earlier. So I choose the checkbox, and sure enough, take a look, 
there's our image in the image view. So in this video, we've seen how to invoke the camera quickly with an implicit intent and only about 10 lines of code and how to take that image and save it into an image view. It's a bit more complex to actually save that image to a file, uh, but we will go through that in a later video. Thank you.